Good morning, everyone. This is BizTix TV. This is the place where you can find tips and tools to help you do business better. We're here to help you run a profitable business that's fun to run and to take the hassle out of your hustle. And today is Coffee, Tea, Thoughts, and Conversations. I'm here with my co-host, Ms. Francine Gregory, real estate entrepreneur and tech diva. And I'm Geraldina from California Cover-Ups, and we're the Biz Chick. So sit back, relax. You know, Monday's the day that we make sure that we hydrate and have our favorite beverage beside us while we join the conversation. So with that, we're going to get started this morning. Hi, Fran. How you doing? Hi. Hello to everybody <laughs> watching live and on the replay. And we're going to have a snackable moment today. Uh, what is your, what is the financial picture of your business look like? The financial future of your business. Have you determined what that will be? Have you thought about what that will be? Um, we talk here about habits and routines because those are the things that will get you to the success that you want. And one of those routines is having a weekly time where you sit down and just look at your numbers, look at your finances and see where you want them to be. Are they on track? How much money came in? Remember the lemonade stand book we made? How much money mm -hmm. came in? How much did you pay out? It's really not a difficult thing, but I believe it is. Uh, we've heard horror stories and boogeyman stories and ghost stories about finance. And so we have it made up in our mind that it's going to be a uh, it's 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 made up in our mind like, oh, my God, this is going to be difficult. And I don't know. And I don't do numbers well. You don't have to do numbers well. Like everything we tell you, you need a cheerleader and a coach. You can find the help you need to get your numbers straight. It doesn't have to be a fearful thing. We got Coach Karen on Wednesday. There's several other people out there. Um, and just what does your financial future look like for your business? So we thought we'd talk about it a little bit today. And you can weigh in if you're watching live or on the replay. But I believe the first thing that needs to happen is in your mind. Make up your mind that this is something we have to do. Uh, and Terry calls it a happiness plan. So your business can have a happy future. What do you want it to look like? A lot of times we don't do it because we're looking at what transpired in the past and it could be all the way back to your childhood or whatever, but you're looking at something that happened in the past instead of focusing in where you want it to go. What do you want it to look like? So how much money should you be making every month? What do you want to earn every month from your business? Um, I believe when we did our workshop over the weekend, um, Angela talked about that. She talked about tracking it. She talked about uh, tracking it back starting at the end and working your way back. And I'm referring to Angela Lofton Moore, by the way. So uh, tracking it back. What, do you, what, is, what are you going to do with that? You're going to start with the end in mind. What do you want to earn in 2020? What are you looking to earn in 2020? Starting at the back. Starting way down in December, you want to earn how much money for the year? You start there. And then how much do you need uh, for your taxes and insurance and, and all of the things that you need to put together? What is your assistant cost? What is your uh, the cost of your uh, running the business, your com your Equipment, computers, paper, office supplies. Hey, Nazim, good morning. What does that all look like? 
What do you need to run your business? What do your costs look like? You have to track that back. So we want to, let's paint the financial picture. Where do we want it to be? Not basing it on what happened in the past, but what do you want it to look like right now? What do you want that financial picture to look like in 2020? Mm -hmm. okay. If you're wanting to do some things, what is that whole thing? What Because uh, she made, uh, Angela made a good point. Uh, was it Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. She mm -hmm. said, if Bill Gates was giving out a grant and he wanted to write a check to your company, could you tell him how much money you needed? Did you have a plan written out? Was there something, was there something written out in English or whatever language it is? Was there something written out that you can say, yes, this is how much we need for this particular thing that we're doing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. Even if you're a small business owner or a micro business or whatever you're solopreneur, whatever you're doing, you need to have those numbers straight. So I'm challenging you. Terry's challenging you. The biz chicks are challenging you to write out your financial picture for 2020. What we had another client who did this and we I challenged her and she wrote it out. Oh, I need five hundred and fifty-five thousand six hundred and twenty-seven dollars, and it included everything. Everything was included in that picture. Well, how do I get started? Well, where do I, where do I go? Okay, Google Sheets. Mac um, um, Mac has the numbers, and Microsoft has Excel. You can go to those three any of those programs, and there are templates for a budget for your business. There's a template that will help you do that. So there's no need for, okay, so that reason, aka excuse, is out of the way. I don't have a template. There is a template there, and it puts things there, and then there's other, so that you can put in things that are, are um apropos for your business, things that only your, you know, that are genuine to your business, there's a place for you to put those things. But it first starts in the mind, making up your mind that you're going to write the plan. And then maybe thinking about why you didn't write the plan all these years, you started the business, we've been doing cookies, we've been doing other things, but why haven't I wrote my financial plan? Is there a fear there? Is there something that is holding me back? Why don't I want to mm -hmm. do this? Do I not have enough information to do it? It can be done and you can get help doing it. You don't have to do it by yourself. Now, if you're thinking that you have to do it by yourself, maybe that's a problem. Oh, I don't know. I don't want anybody to know what you know why it's not working or whatever. You can do this. You can get help. There are many people who can help you. They would be, um, and I'm not going to say like a financial planner, the one that does the the uh, retirement and that type of thing. But you need somebody who knows numbers. The people we know around us, the people in your neighborhood, the people that you meet walking down the street, the ones who have bookkeeper on their mm -hmm. door, accountant on their door, tax consultant on their door, you need to talk to somebody to, that's gonna help you get that done. And it's okay. Find somebody you trust. Have a session with them. What do I need to do to for my picture? And I, I, if I'm not mistaken, your your tax preparer, if they are a good one, they give you a book that lists all of the stuff that you need to report to the IRS. So 
Terry, you mentioned something um, earlier today when we were getting ready to talk about it. You said that, um, I'm trying to remember what it was, but you mentioned when you, you go to get some help, you call it a happiness plan. So you reframe mm -hmm. what the, what it means to you. It's a financial futures plan. I'm trying to remember what it was you said this morning. I should have wrote it down. Onward. Get some help. Mm -hmm. Help is out there. Brenna says she uses Google Sheets. Mm. It's out there. You can do this. And if you know the the more you track the money and know where it went, the more happy you become. How about this? Simplify mm -hmm. weekly bookkeeping record. You can get these at office supply store, and it lists the things that you might have expenses for. Yeah. So even if you took this and wrote down what your expenses for uh, for every month then tabulated for times 12 that's what you're going to need for the year it has merchandise and materials because you do california cover-ups that means i have inventory i have fabric uh, exactly mm -hmm. then claudia says that the small business development center is a good resource Corpor corporation uh -huh. yeah for putting together a financial plan um, it has on here advertising, how much you're going to spend on advertising a year. I mean, it lists like 57 things. Mm -hmm. And then the Zine asks, um, can I put wine consumption as a tax write-off? If you put it under a business dinner, yes. And <laughs> if you, yeah, yeah, you know, you really can. Don't know if you want to call it that, but it is a meals expense because it's on here. And mm -hmm. payment is on here. Delivery, electricity, freight and ex express, heat. Oh, you, you, all of these are on here. Licenses, the, your postage, your rent, the repairs. Uh, all of these different things are things that help your business go well. And these are all expenses that you should account for for the year. And if you know how much money you need to bring in for the year, okay, what was that, Terry? We talked about your salary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. A lot of a lot of solopreneurs do not put their salary on there. If they don't include the hours that they work. They, I mean, even if you were an hourly employee, you need to put something down because you feel like you're just um, peddling and not being compensated. Right. And um, Nazim says he hates doing taxes. That's why you had you hire a tax professional. You just you do your work and do and do the work and the things that you're supposed to do. And you have the bookkeeper who's keeping up with uh, the numbers and you pass that off. To the tax person. And Brenna said, gifts and entertainment for wine. It's a write-off. But every successful business and the people who want to be successful, you've got to do those numbers. You And, and Terry and I are encouraging you, because she's a cheerleader. I'm going to take you drop and give me 20. <laughs> Set aside a time every week on your business and spend 30 minutes doing your numbers. You can get a book, you can get Google Sheets, you can do some spend some time. Oh, what is our favorite? One of our favorite things, get somewhere and sit down. Sit down. Mm -hmm. And count the cost of doing your business. Somebody might want to write you a check. Mm. And didn't we watch that somewhere? I think Magic Johnson was doing something and he was going to help somebody. Help and the young lady with the yogurt place. And she picked a, a spot that where there was no foot traffic. It was hidden behind some hedges. 
it, there were just a lot of things with the location that wasn't conducive to what her service was. And um, she didn't know her numbers. She was at, he was asking her about, you know, insurances and square how much, footage. How much does these things, how much do these things cost? And she couldn't answer the question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you answer the question? What does it cost to run your business every year? Now, with that being said, I'm not telling you to go back to whatever you did before. You want to know what it costs to do your business for the year because somebody may want to uh, grant you something. Oh, mm -hmm. I am. I am so into what you're doing. Let me write, let me write you a check. I'd like to, and if you wanted investors, don't investors need to know how the money is being run? Would you invest in someone's business that doesn't have a plan of how they're going to spend it? Okay, let's take it like this. You don't give your kids five hundred dollars for no reason you ask them what is the five hundred dollars going to be used for yes mm -hmm. and normally have a plan well what was your daughter's we have a cotillion we got a this we got a this and we need this and we got tickets for that and all of these things that are going on and you but you you had a plan for each one of them. They had a plan. It wasn't just mom, give me $500 and there was no plan. Uh, Nazim says, I have mine, his company based in New York, but he also has one for the Italian taxes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brenna says, I don't enjoy doing taxes. I enjoy the return, whether simply done or actual refund. Yeah, most of the time I'm just about I'm just glad it's done. <laughs> and, and what we I would like to help us do is get a different. We learned over the weekend to change our mind about things, because how we think about it, if we think of it as drudgery, uh, think of it as a way. Like Brenna said, you get a return doing your taxes or having your finances straight. You know what's going on with your money. You know if there's a leak or if there's something is not going right. Um, probably knowing what's going on with your money and having a plan for it, you're not susceptible to somebody else's plan for your money. Mm. Because now the government doesn't get to get a bigger portion that they deserve because you know that, oh, I'm in this tax bracket. I know that this is... I can have this write off, this write off, and something to that effect. So it's not just not doing it. Knowing your numbers is crucial for the success of your business. Having some numbers. Okay, so this is what I, this is what we talked about this morning, Terry. It has come back when we worked at the companies oh, that accountability. Worked, we work for other people. We were accountable to them. Thank you, Brenna. I'm going to put that up there. Never say the H word for anything displeased, displeasing or dis, uh, or, or, or a view. That's very good. I love doing I enjoy doing uh, my financials. I have to now have a new conversation with myself. I enjoy my financial meeting every week. It's only 30 minutes. I sit down, I get to look at my numbers and look to see what's happening. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, we were accountable to other people when we worked for them. Mm -hmm. What? could be the reason that we are not accountable to ourselves. Anybody can weigh in on that. 
I don't know. I think sometimes, especially when, when we're a solopreneur, we feel like, oh, I don't have to do that. I really don't need to check in. Um, the other thing is, I, am I afraid to look at the numbers because I don't think I made um, a profit and that would be discouraging um, and I might lose my momentum or my enthusiasm. So there are a lot of things, a lot of chatter going on in the head about these numbers. Mhm. I'm gonna look. See no evil. Speak no evil. <laughs> but you no evil. What happened when you when you wrote your number and looked at them, Terry? Well, I found that I actually made more money than I thought I did, and it encouraged me to keep running the business. Is when it's the unknown, the the fear of the unknown. Is the thing that keeps us back. I, I don't oh, know. What did I say yesterday about fear? Fight fear with a plan. <gasps> mm. She said the P word, people. If you plan your financial future, you know where it's going. You planned it. But if you yeah. didn't. That, that belongs up on a wall somewhere. Fight fear with a plan. The plan. Okay. I need to, you know how you can get all them things at Hobby Lobby? We need to make one, put it up there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. Because if you know where your finance, you painted the financial picture, you've already planned out your financial future. We plan a trip to um, um, vacation. You plan out what flight you're taking, where you're going, how much it's going to cost you, what you're going to do when you get there, and you have the whole thing set up when you go on a vacation. Okay, when we get to Disneyland, we're going to go here first. We're going to go do this, this, this. You have it all set up. You've already created the plan. You know what that plan is going to look like. If you did the same thing with your finance, there now the boogeyman, the ghost stories, and the monsters are no longer there because no, I have a plan. I'm not walking into the unknown. Mm -hmm. I've taken on fear and I won because I have a plan. Sitting down, looking at your numbers is very crucial. And, and um, we talked about this over the weekend, putting it on the schedule. Claudia is saying, I enjoy doing financials as well. When I did do the financials for Walgreens, I remember gritting my teeth every time giving my boss a $10,000 a year bonus while they would even, while they would even give me $100 and took, away, took my turkey away. But now you're in control of your own finances, right, Claudia? Jerry says she wants that plaque. Jerry, okay. make the plaque. Okay. Make the plaque, Jerry. She has a skill set to do that. Would love to know how the gals plan for future retirement. You better have something on that. See, part of your financial future, one of them will be a category for... Um, uh, Retirement, right? Mm -hmm. The company you work for, they were putting together something for your retirement, even when you weren't. Yeah. Right? Then the government, yeah. they took out Social Security. You may not get a lot of it, but they took it out mm -hmm. of your paycheck because they knew you wouldn't. When you work for somebody else, they took it out for you. So you know what it seems like? It seems like it's the mindsets that's driving everything. Mm -hmm. Did you set aside? So on your financial plan, money to go toward, in this plan here, money to go toward um, your retirement or money just set aside in saving. 
Mm -hmm. And Nazim said, yep, just got a letter from the IRS indicating the amount that he had set aside for Social Security. They do tell you how much you got coming. Oh, they even had a plan. Really? Yep, they had a plan because there were too many people falling through the cracks. Um, initially, the plan was supposed to be temporary, but then they found out, you know, people really need this. <laughs> or else they'll all be on welfare if we don't do something to help them set this stuff aside. Right. So why don't we get ahead of the game and you can determine your future for yourself. When you put the number out there, now you start working toward, okay, well, how many sales do I need to keep that going? But if you never paint that picture, you're just kind of like, I wonder what's going to happen today. And you're just kind of floating through the air, not knowing or not even having a target to shoot at. Or you wake up and you're unprepared. But even when you're unprepared, you got to have a plan because now you definitely have to have a response. Right. And it's not too late today. Today it's is never, never too late. late. You can start making your financial plan. We are charging you. We are helping you, encouraging you. Take a day out of the week, put in 30 minutes, and, and make it the same time every week and do that plan. And just look at your numbers for the week. Oh, wow. I had, I had, oh, I had a thousand dollars more than I thought. Now, how you spent it, that's a whole nother area that we'll get into later, but you had the money come in. And maybe if you could see how much came in, you can go, oh, I had that thousand dollars come in. I don't know where it went, although I should know where it went. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you start looking at the numbers and getting comfortable with the numbers and start enjoying the numbers. Oh, I like that. I'm going to enjoy the numbers. Even if you're not a math person, enjoy what the numbers will do for you. You know that there are a lot of people who get into business and want to have that um, vacation on the beach and and have time to myself and blah, blah, blah. But if you don't do the numbers part first, you, that other stuff don't happen. Mm -hmm. Knowing your numbers sets you up for what's to come. It sets you up. It puts you in a good place. There was a scripture that says, know the state of your flocks. How much you got coming in? How much do you have going out? Who is it going out to? Why is it going out to them? Oh. <laughs> How much are the cows bringing you? How much is the milk bringing you? How much is the the wine, Nazim? How much is that bringing you, you know, the vineyards? And it doesn't have to be, we're, we're, we're not saying that it has to be all day, every day. It's 30 minutes a week. Just sit down 30 minutes a week and play with your plan. You might not get it right the first time, but um, like uh, Claudia says, she says, yes, I'm in control now. You have, you set your financial future. The IRS doesn't, or whatever government you uh, you are under, they don't set your future. You set your financial future. It, here, the, the quiet thing in life is we set the plan for our entire life, just not our mm. financial future. We set the plan for our entire lives. We have that control. So Terry and I are going to tell you, take that control. And Claudia says, I'm not a math person, but I do take advantage of uh, Microsoft Excel. I've learned to create mm. a massive formula for every need I may forget about. Now, here's the thing. Uh, we're all family here. Reach out to Claudia and ask her, hey, how did you do that? Because there is uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, there's Sheets. 
and there's numbers. You can use the tools that you have on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, whatever brand it is, the tool is there to help you. Reach out to Claudia and, and say, hey, Claudia, how did, you, how did you do that? And then give her a little something, something in her hand for helping for her helping you do that. But you got this. Your financial future awaits. Paint it today. Make it colorful. Make it beautiful. And enjoy it. Terry, anything else? No, I just want to remind everybody, don't forget to go to the front of your own line. Yes. And then also um, over on our on, on our Biz Chicks page, Linus has how to hire an intern uh, class. It's mm -hmm. up over there. Um, it's $47 coming up on the 19th. That is one way to go to the front of your own line, getting some help. And maybe the intern can help you with the books. Mm. Mm -hmm. So thank you once again. And we will talk to you tomorrow with TJ. She's coming in uh, talking about digital marketing. And uh, we're going to get some more financial help with Coach Karen on Wednesday. Thursday, we got Happy Healthy Habits with Robin. And our guest this week will be Maureen Stevenson. And then we're back on Friday talking tech in English. I love it. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in for this little snack, your little breakfast break. We will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.